not affected one or two or a few countries, but it has brought the entire world to a reset mode. This again makes the situation very unique. In our opinion, what we are facing today can be called as an international emergency, probably the worst in the modern history. And the biggest question that we all have right now is, the pandemic is going to be short term or the industry may take a much longer time to recover after the lockdown. What will be the size of the impact? These and many more questions that we all have in our mind. Our eminent panel today will help us guide through all these questions and will suggest us as what are the areas that we should focus and what are the steps that we should take in order to revive post this difficult time. I would now like to get straight on to my questions of the panel, but before I do that, let me inform you that we have more than 1400 people from the industry register on this webinar and people have come live in huge numbers. In fact, the attendee login still continues as we speak. So let us move on to the uh, first question of my session and I would like to share the question screen so that uh, you do not miss out on any question. Let me just share the screen for you. Okay, while the screen share comes, let me start with the question right for you. Uh, the first question I would like to ask pertaining to the polyester industry constraint, uh, I would like to reach out to Mr. R.D. Udeshi for that. Mr. Udeshi, the polyester industry has suffered a huge setback uh, due to crude oil price slash these days. How do you think the impact uh, is going to be for the polyester chain, both for India as well as the global market? Uh, I think the way in which the things are going, so we are looking at the, based on the IMF 2020, the GDP is likely to contract in a big way and it is going to be worse than what we saw in 2009, which was uh, 0. Point, minus 0.1 percent. I think this is going to be the lowest in the four decades. So this is a one issue. I think Indian economy, Originally, we were supposed to be growing at the rate of 6%, 7%. And the way in which we are now seeing the projection coming from the different part of the uh, industry, they have been talking about uh, minus growth of minus 2%, minus 3%. Nomura has said minus 2% of the GDP growth. So that is going to be the second issue. The Chinese economy, which is again contributing to the global uh, growth is likely to be in this time of the 2020, maybe below one, one and a half percent. The, as per the WTO, the world merchandise trade volume is set to decline by almost 30 percent during this time. We have uh, seen that April to June quarter for all practical purpose is washed out. Nothing has happened as far as the textile industry is concerned. We have seen most of the textile hubs which are manufacturing and weaving, processing and garmenting activity such as Surat, Ahmedabad, Ichal Karanji, Malegao, Ludhiana, Manoj. Manoj. Ludhiana, sorry, Ludhiana, Ludhiana as well as some of the other areas have been totally under the red red zone and there is hardly any activity as far as the weaving processing and garmenting is taking so i think this is a big concern for us and we believe that in generally there is a vacuum in the pipeline uh, i was having a inter internal call just few minutes ago with our uh, northern office and they say they had opened the shop in Amritsar for textile and there was a big queue of people asking for a fabric or a garment to be bought from that shop. I asked him what is the logic? Hmm. Interestingly he told me that the wheat crop has been very good and farmers are now having enough money to go into the shopping street. So I think that is another issue. The third issue which is a concern with us is the volatility in the overall the uh, building blocks of the polyester and the textile chain. 
we saw that the crude which was uh, once upon a time 100 dollars a barrel went down to 50 dollar then went down to 20 dollar and for some time it was uh, minus 0 minus 2 minus 3 dollar you buy a crude and the supplier pays you for buying the crude so that was the situation last month itself today we are also talking about uh, crude floating between 25 to 30 dollars a barrel but this volatility i think which is one of the concern area is a big threat to the industry i think people are carrying a stock just prior to the lockdown which took place and this stock they are carrying which is having a high value of the input cost at that time the crude was much higher rate and then today's scenario it has gone down so there will be a big kind of a stock losses the industry will witness during the uh, coming uh, coming time so i think this is a big concern for us and today based on the our internal information there are no weaving activity activity taking place either of the weaving cells there are no polyester no polyester manufacturing taking place uh, most of the polyester units are either in gujarat or they are in uh, silvasa silvasa the migration of the worker is uh, another issue although the silvasa is in a green zone people don't want to go to the work so silvasa there are no polyester unit operating number 2 there are no texturizing activity taking place whatever little activity which is taking place is mainly for export purpose so i think this is another concern so hopefully beyond 18th 19th people will see end of the tunnel some light and some activity would start because end of the day we need to accept certain reality because one is a life are of course very critical and important for any country but the economy cycle has to continue so slowly slowly some activity would start taking place and this will help the industry help the economy and this will stop the migration of the worker which is another critical part of it if there are no workers available industry wants to run the show also they may not be able to run the show so i think this are the area where we need to uh, be a little more agile and be watchful what is happening i think this is unlike polymer industry which is mainly using the packaging as a item or we are making pet which is used for packaging item or film which are used for again packaging and other application those are running reasonably well and uh, good demand for all those product but textile side is a concern for all of us so that's uh, my way of thinking thank you right thank you mr uh, thank you for giving us a complete overview on the question i would now like to reach out to mr sanjay jain uh, mr jain uh, like other sectors of textile the ginning and spinning industry has also faced a big heat like recently we've been uh, reading the cotton textile export promotion council has projected a 22% fall in textile exports about 37% of drop in the cotton yarn shipment and 73% of slide in the raw cotton for 1920 fiscal so how long do you think this setback will affect the overall ginning and spinning industry in particular and how do you think the losses can be minimized mr jain yeah mr jain you can hear me i think we have lost connection with mr jain uh, until 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 he joins back i would like to reach out to mr raja gopalan then mr raja gopalan you can hear me yes i am able to hear you okay. mr raja gopalan uh, i have a question for you pertaining to garment industry in particular uh, the garment industry has been the worst sufferers like you know the brands and retailers are cancelling the orders and the domestic market has also been shut down due to lockdown these days what steps do you think the apparel manufacturers need to take in order to sustain themselves? First of all, I want to pray to God that all of us should come out of this as quickly as possible. Time has come for all of us to be together and do the hand holding. From the supplier side, all of us has to talk to each other and work out a strategy because fortunately, 
domestically, none of the orders have been cancelled as far as our industry is concerned. But there has been the on the side of demand, that is on the retail chain being closed, the inventory is not moving into the marketplace. So that way, that uh, the real season for us is going to be the festival season. So that kind of adjustment will happen from all side from the industry point of view. But from the manufacturing point of view, whatever is the pipeline stock that will get cleared over a period of next two months and the festival order will get re, uh, re, uh, redone in a right way so that how the demand picks up, simultaneously the production will also pick up. But from the manufacturer as well as from the receiver point of view, if you are a brand owner and you have placed an order with the manufacturer, you have to readjust our business plan based on the market demand. So that way, if it is a hand holding together, communication from both sides, rework of orders, and rationalize product matrix. Hello? Yeah, go on, go on. And uh, divide the product matrix into essential and non-essential. What are the products which you don't have to manufacture in the pipeline? What are the things which are in the pipeline has to be completed quickly so that you are in a, uh, in a position to streamline your manufacturing operation in turn also the demand side of the business so that you can take the new inventory to the market as quickly as possible. And from both the side, both have to work together. And uh, this is a time where everybody has to communicate with each other on a daily basis. And little bit of handholding and transparent communication. What is there in the production? What is this needed urgently? What is not needed urgently? That kind of replanning has to be done between the manufacturer and the brand owners. And there are certain pipeline entries which will go into the market when the retail space opens up. And once this goes to the market, there will be automatically the demand cycle which will get trickling. And in the process, manufacturing will also get corrected because it's a just a 60 days of setback that can be adjusted over a period of next three to four months time when the festival peak season is in the offing. So that will take care of the setback that we have faced now in the last 60 days. So I don't foresee a big problem. The, we have to do more adjustment in terms of season which is coming in. So that will resolve a lot of our issues. Right. Okay. There seems to be some technical clutch. Yeah, Mr. Rajagopalan, you concluded yes. your huh? Hello? Yeah, Mr. Rajagopalan, yeah. Yes. So it is a question of hand-holding in the value chain. From the manufacturing to the brand owners, from brand owners to retailers, distributors, everything, all the value chain has to work together in one team to handhold and resolve each and every issue on a day-to-day -day basis, rather than waiting for the issue to come off. Okay. Right. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. Like I believe these are really some of the constructive solutions that you had suggested. Uh, Mr. Sanjay, now you're back. Uh, you can yeah, sorry, I got disconnected for a which moment. Which is fine, which is fine. We understand. Okay. Like other sectors, you know, the textile, uh, you know, the ginning and spinning industry has faced uh, a big hit. Like, you know, I was just uh, referring to an article of uh, which says that Cotton Textile Export Promotion Council has re recently projected a 22% fall in textile export. And likewise, also 73% of slide in raw cotton for 1920 fiscal. So my question for you is that, what will be the effect for the Indian ginning and spinning industry and how you believe this, the losses can be managed, particularly for the ginning and spinning industry, sir? Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Jigar, and thank you, Fiber and Fashion, for inviting me for this uh, important panel discussion. Uh, well, if, first of all, if you look at ginning, uh, it's in very bad shape primarily because of the total crash in prices because of no demand. We all know international cotton prices uh, came down from 70 cents a pound uh, on the international cotton exchange to almost as low as 50 cents. And now they've recovered to about 55, 56 cents. We're still about 20% below. Similarly, Indian cotton has also crashed uh, from a level of 40,000 to about 32, 33,000 33, levels, you could say. So we are again 15, 16% down. And most people, whether you are a spinning or a ginner, were holding stock. Even the farmers were holding stock. Even CCI, Cotton Corporation of India, is holding stock. So you can imagine uh, in a commodity type item, if you're wiped out by about 15% on your holdings, what sort of losses you're looking from day one. And these are immediate day one losses. And the profits that you were making by operating, 
for at least two months, you could say on the average, we have lost total. Well, we, we have started operating a bit for the last 10, 15 days, but the way production is happening is you can see a clear two months fall. Our two month production uh, impact means about 16 to 17% of uh, total production fall. So uh, things are bad because everyone was holding cotton stock, which is typical for two to three months. Uh, but as you very rightly said, and very interestingly said, and it was also Mr. Udeshi also added on, that first time you're having not only a demand disruption, you're having a supply disruption. So uh, the demand disruption has already been felt by the suppliers. But the supply disruption is going to be felt once we start opening up. And Mr. Udeshi was giving an example of one uh, mill, uh, one uh, shop in Amritsar. We, because TT brand is in, uh, also on in the total value chain and we sell mainly in the rural and semi-urban areas, you can't imagine the sort of demand we are seeing. It's at an unprecedented high. We are already short of goods. The problem is transportation is very bad. Courier companies are charging twice the amount, thrice the amount, and we don't know when the goods are going to reach. So everyone is in panic to buy, and whoever is buying is also giving money. It means that at the back end, the cycle has also started. Because obviously no one had money when the lockdown started. So the circle has started, the velocity has started. That's one point. So definitely ginning and swimming are going to make huge losses. How they can make up these losses is a big question mark. Honestly, I don't see how you're going to make up the losses immediately. We hope that due to the supply disruption and the demand we are seeing, even yarn exports, though yarn local demand is not there, but spinning mills on the average are running at 30 to 50% level. And at that level, there's no problem to sell yarn because uh, of Indian prices crashing. Yes, we are not making money. We have some are losing, some are at par, depending on your price of raw material, but we are able to move the goods. So factories are able to rotate. So I going forward, I see yarn prices picking up again as domestic demand comes, because we should not forget that still 75 to 80, 75 percent of the yarn is sold domestically in India. Only 20 to 25 goes abroad. And considering the condition where no one has anything, especially if you look not only at cotton yarn, if you look at polyester yarn, now winter productions were supposed to start. And Ludhiana, which is a very big hub, both for yarn and fabric has been also totally stalled. So it's a big question mark of how much shortage we're going to see in winter time, which primarily uses polyester and polyester blends. We use less of quarter for winter. So uh, my thing would be, look, we've lost what we had to lose. As an industry, we lost whatever we had to lose. We have deep holes burnt, whether it's ginning, whether it's spinning, whether it's fabric, the holes have been burnt. Now is the time to start repairing. Now I agree, if you say, I'll use a word, we'll have to do a rafu as we say in Hindi. Uh, it's not going to be possible that we, uh, we just take an iron and fuse it so that the hole is finished. Nahi hole rahega. But by rafu, the scars are going to be there. But my strong thing is don't panic. Don't sell your stock at loss. Make your normal or better than normal margins at all association levels we are talking. We should not restrain because our production is not going to be more than 50, 60 percent, even for the next 15, 20 or 30 days. Labor is going to be a big issue. There are going to be other operational issues. There are going to be liquidity issues. The government has announced many measures. Most spinning and ginning are not going to come under SME. So they are not going to benefit out of getting quick liquidity uh, at reasonable rates. Yes, down the chain, whether it's fabric guys, garment people, most of them are MSMEs. They are going to get a lot of money who are customers of ginning and spinning. This is the right time. Go get that money immediately from banks. They cannot refuse you. It's an automatic approval. And take cash discount and pay your suppliers immediately. So you get money at 8 to 9%. You can easily discount it at 12 to 15%. So uh, many people are telling, we don't need the money, we have never borrowed, or we have a very small borrowing. Forget what you had, liquidity is the king. Preserve cash, pay to your vendor, you develop a good relation. And in these trying times, we are also doing the same thing in garments. Whoever gives money gets the goods. Whoever doesn't give money does not get the goods. Because we also don't have any money, we also need to pay salary, wages, interest, power, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So it's going to be a slow process, but I think so margins are going to be better. 
from today, zero date. Yes, if you're holding old stock in ginning and spinning, you'll have to burn them out. You'll have to take that bitter bill, just like you take in any recession. But going forward, I don't see your sales falling too much because we have taken the hit of two months. It's already, we are technically, if we are every month at same level, we still fall by 16%. So maybe there could be a 5 to 10% fall in the next 6 months or 20%. But production again is also going to be 15 to 20% less. So I see no strain on the demand supply side. So let's be strong. Let's focus. And the guys who, who outperform, who work that extra smart, are definitely going to see unprecedented and unexpected gains. I repeat myself, unexpected gains, which today we are not being forecasted. Uh, we have seen it already happening with people who took the first mover advantage and moved into PP. But today, if you want to move in PP, be careful if you're making investments. Because uh, the scene is not going to be as rosy as you've seen in the past. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Sanjay. Those were like really useful insights. Okay, my next question is to uh, Mr. Dhruva. Mr. Dhruva, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Sir, uh, in view of this rising concerns of these COVID-like situations, what do you think the antiviral and antimicrobial fabrics will become the new norm for the day-to-day -day apparels? Or do you think this is going to be limited for the medical textiles only? Well, uh, Jigar, first of all, good morning to you and all, to the, pe all the people uh, who joined this uh, webinar from Danya Group of Industries. Uh, well, the, as the other panelists have already stated, uh, it's a crisis situation. Uh, but we've been in this business, uh, if I particularly say the company GBTL, we've been there since 1938. So we've seen a lot of ups and downs and various products and things done over the period. And uh, we've always been proactive on our approach as to how uh, you have to face the challenges. It's a challenge, for sure. There is a disruption. And it's up to all the people whether to get disturbed, uh, see the negativity of it, or see the positive side of it. Uh, from our perspective, from our company's perspective, while we were all getting depressed with our news of negativity, of closures, and people falling sick and ill, which is still on, uh, what we did was that our R&D uh, from January has been working on as to what new we can do. Because we were sure that disruptions are coming in because we do a lot of exports uh, to the global market. And we had our business stoppages starting from January itself when the US business, I mean, the US buyers started stopping uh, and they started holding the production. What we did from our side uh, is that with our new Neotech, the, the, we call that a te new technology for our Donia group of uh, companies, where we have diversified products. We manufacture right from cotton shirting to cotton suiting. Uh, to wool, polywools, and my own company, which I look after, GBTL, uh, where we manufacture polyviscous, uh, we came up with this uh, fabric called uh, antiviral and antibacterial fabric. Now, we've been doing this kind of fabric, not the antiviral one, but we've been doing the antibacterial one for a long time. In fact, we are supplying a lot of fabric to the government departments and a lot of other customers who've been needing it. Even the brands in India have been buying it. Even in our local market, we've been doing it. But with this antiviral thing, we have come up to our Neotech technology is something which is a need of the hour and need of the time. When the fabric, what we manufacture in all our mills, is something where it is sold in the market with touch and feel. And when you are restricting everybody uh, that you can't touch anything, if you touch, you're going to be contaminated or you will have the virus, is something this kind of an antiviral would be uh, a game changer. That's what we feel. So it's not going to get restricted only to the medical textiles or the medical requirements or the places where only medical aspects are involved. But we are thinking in terms of that even because for sure the priority may not be for buying an apparel or a fabric uh, as soon as we open up in our Indian market. But you have to be different and distinctive. In that context, we are uh, going as soon as we, because we've started as a bell, we started manufacturing. We've already started having queries from a lot of brands because they want to introduce this product in their brand and apparel. So we are hoping that as soon as this fabric, as soon as everything comes up, everything, uh, I mean, the lockdown opens up, uh, we will have a lot of requirements coming in for this particular kind of fabric. And it will be used in a lot of this suits and trousers 
and uh, you know the formal wear what we primarily do in our uh, polyvestos and also in our woolen fabrics where we because the winter is coming in so we are working on that technology to be used on our tweeds uh, where uh, our OCM brand which is uh, always been of course reckoned with in wool plants so they are also doing it and then on our cotton fabrics our cotton shirting which we do yarn dyes in a big way in surat we also do cotton uh, you know the trousering fabric we are uh, we are going to be applying all this new tech technology of anti viral fabrics on that so the point is we have to create the positivity in the mind of the market the consumers what is important today is it's not just the production we have to look at we have to look at whether we're going to be relevant in the market or not so obviously the health what our panelists have already stated mr jain has stated um, so deshi has stated the health from the banks and the, i mean the government and everything is solicited at this time we are looking at sustaining ourselves for certain time hoping for good things to come which are surely going to come uh, because when you have the global market getting into a situation like this pandemic you have a lot of pressure on yourself but i am sure and we as a group company are very sure that as soon as the things get normal which very soon it should be we will have positive ticking happening and we will have a good market for our kind of antiviral antibacterial fabric that's what uh, my contention and my uh, purpose is i have something more to add yeah uh, uh, what mr durwa said i think that uh, the business model for manufacturing textile demand pattern supply pattern supply chain issues i think they are going to be totally different than what we had prior to the covid issue so i think people are now looking for entry entry uh, anti micro uh, microbial or anti viral or anti bacteria type of fabric people are also looking to hydrophilic type of fabric which uh, helps in the medical textile people are looking for wrinkle free uh, free fabric people are looking for anti odor anti sweating type of fabric people are also looking for anti uh, peeling or to avoid any uh, microbial uh, effect taking place while you wear fabric or you have pu coated denims or i think for agro textile uh, some soil related soil releases and few more type of fabrics are being now uh, being looked into it so i think the situation which has emerged has forced people to look for some alternatives i think people used to make uh, ready made garments the garmenting industry never thought that they will make ppe suit <laughs> okay so now in today's scenario i think in india is making around 250000 to 300000 ppe suits which are required for the national interest so the whole business model is changing now i think people are now going into the different application whether it is a geo textile whether it is a medical textile whether it is a agro textile i think these are the new norms which are being created and i think your topic talks about the survival of the fittest i think this survival will comes from the innovation different product applications and uh, uh, people thinking differently than what they were thinking few months ago i think that is going to be the uh, new new scenario which is getting emerging in the current situation. thank you So I think uh, I will just add to what uh, Mr. Deshi stated, uh, Jigar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When uh, Mr. Deshi stated about hydrophilic and wrinkle-free, uh, this is what is very, very essential now. Although we, uh, the GPTL, the Grassim suiting we had at that time, we came up with uh, a game changer in our poly rayon, poly viscous uh, suiting business. We came up with a brand called Ice Touch, which is a sub brand, and that Ice Touch, and this is in the year 2002 and 3. I'm talking about. and it became a rage we suddenly at the market at that time was dipping in for our kind of business and we came up with this uh, uh, you know this ice touch and it became a rage and post that the latent demand what uh, udeshi ji mentioned uh, for wrinkle free we came up with a sub brand called uncrushable so that became a rage and now with the kind of innovations actually what the polyester uh, business does 
is something which is credible. It's always been uh, giving us that kind of a support. So the kind of polyester fiber we get is what we are able to spin it better. It's a vertical integrated uh, mill we have. So we spin it, we do the R&D ourselves, and we are able to produce, you know, naturally the uh, kind of uncrushable or wrinkle-free. And with a stretch blend, so we introduced uh, just about 10 years back, so we have always been ahead of time, we introduced the stretch blends with the poly rayon uh, fabrics. Now, stretch is virtually wrinkle-free. The kind of fabric what I'm wearing is also stretch. It's a, um, a by, I mean, by stretch. It's a four-way stretch. So when in times, when you have so much of travel that was happening earlier, uh, these kind of wrinkle-free requirements of the fabric happened because people were not able to, you know, iron it or they didn't have the time. They were traveling everywhere and uh, they wanted that something should not wrinkle. So anything which is innovative, anything which is come out, uh, coming out with the value proposition to the buyer, something which the consumer uh, wants to go and spend money, not the normal one, because normal money is not going to come. People are going to be scared for some months to come where they're not going to be making uh, garments and apparels to be a priority. So you need to stand out. You have to voice it to the consumers that you are different than what it was earlier. It's not the no normal routine. It's something different. It's more value. You should have it. And that's where the antimicrobial, hydrophilic finishes, wrinkle-free, uh, you know, the antivirus uh, fabrics, all this will become very, very essential for, uh, you know, the textile, the apparel, or the fabric producers to introduce. Thank you, Mr. Dhruva. Of course, we would like to have a little more insights about this Grado technology. And we also believe that there is a rise in consciousness regarding cleanliness of what one wears. And this is going to result in the growth of antimicrobial marketing textiles and rightly endorsed by Mr. Udeshi also. And Grado has already initiated this uh, with the Neotech technology. Okay, so we have Mr. V.K. Singh uh, with us, who is the additional secretary, Ministry of Textiles, Government of India. Mr. Singh, uh, thank you so much for joining us, sir. You need to unmute your uh, voice, sir. Yeah, thank you. Welcome, sir. Sir, I have a question for you. Uh, like Mr. Udeshi ji has also raised a concern on the migrant workers, I mean, the labor shortage issue. So these days, the migrant workers are increasingly passing over to the respective states, with government is also making various provisions for them. How do you think the industry will be able to manage the labor shortage once it's, uh, it, it reopens completely, sir? That's going to be a challenge, definitely. But what I feel, it all depends that how we... Uh, carry through this pandemic. If uh, things are not that bad, which we expect, then after a couple of months, things will normalize and people may return also, at least a significant part of uh, the uh, migrant labor will definitely come. But as I heard, the innovation is the key. Things will definitely have to change. I think if not, uh, you will may not have the same number always available, so you will have to do little more than uh, pass to attract them and retain them. So industry will have to be little accommodative and things will, I think this is a short period of no, nobody knows that how it will turn ultimately, but definitely there is a way out and things will settle down in new scenario also. Right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Okay. Uh, I would like to move on again to Mr. Udeshi now. One more question on polyester market, sir. The polyester market, as we all know, has been dominated by India and China globally. And now with China facing the red face from the West, how do you think India can take the advantage and can India lead the world polyester market production in the coming decade, sir? Uh, I fully agree with you. But the only thing is uh, we are number two as far as the polyester industry is concerned next to China. But the gap between one and two is too wide. Today, China produces roughly 50 million tons of polyester. And in India, we are still struggling to manufacture six to seven uh, million tons of man-made fiber. So we need to catch up with that. I have been telling in most of my discussion that if India is looking for increasing the textile, from existing $140 billion to $350 billion, the fibers required to meet the textile requirement, today for $140 billion, we need around 10 to 11 million tons of all fiber 
which consists of around 5 million tons of cotton, roughly 5 to 6 million ton, and 5 to 6 million ton of uh, synthetic. Now to reach the $350 billion, you will need another 15 to 18 million tons of all fiber. I do not expect cotton production to go beyond what it is today, maybe up to 6 to 7 million ton. India, by doing everything, can produce, may produce, because we have already reached to 95% of the uh, cotton production with the latest technology. And what we have is around 600 kg or 650 kg of uh, yield, what we are getting. I think the production of the cotton will remain within the limitation of 6 million ton. So rest of the fiber will have to come from synthetic. And within synthetic, of course, the polyester plays the prominent role. In this situation, I think the India needs to invest in entire value chain of polyester and textile. So I'm talking about up to polyester. So you take into account the paraxylene or whether you take into account the PTA or monoethylene glycol or fiber or filament, roughly 14 to 15 billion dollar of investment will be required to meet the demand of the textile industry. Now your question is with this, all this thing happening, whether this is an opportunity for India, I, there are two views on it. One view is that people have very short memory. And end of the day, people think on the economics and emotions are kept aside. So people talk about Chinese virus and I have been talking to some of our customers and I used to tell them that why are you importing now filament fiber from China? China has exported virus and you are importing fiber and filament. Then they come out with the answer that end of the day, economic plays more important role than the rest of the thing. So, of course, there will be some uh, impact which will be seen from the Western world where they will reduce their dependence on China to the extent possible. I think we in India also are realizing that our over dependence on China, whether it is on dye stuff or whether it is on medical uh, intermediate products or so, or pharmaceutical, I think the ministry has realized that our over dependence on China is detrimental to the national interest. Anytime if they stop supplying some of the intermediates, then the whole chain comes to standstill. So this is a big concern for us. But keeping all these things in mind, I think US, West, uh, Western Europe, and some of the countries are looking for now much higher alternative than sourcing product from China. To what extent we can capture the reduction of the Chinese export into Video Indian Canada. export is a big issue. If this is captured by Vietnam or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka, then we will lose out on the whole uh, value chain. So we need to be a little proactive and existing, existing textile uh, exports uh, which is getting restricted to only 33-34 billion dollar and the target is to reach to $100 billion. I think we have to think beyond what we are doing today in our routine way. So we need to be having more fashion fabric. We need to have little more processing capability to meet to the global requirement, which is lacking today. And thirdly, on the garmenting side, I think we need to look to the much larger cluster of the garmenting where you know the large production takes place as an assembly line and not as a stitching unit. So I think these are the things we need to look into. It. Over. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, we have uh, Mr. Kataria, Mr. Prem Kumar Kataria, ex special secretary, Minister of Textiles, is with us. Welcome, sir. You need yeah, to good, afternoon. good afternoon. Yeah, we, I just joined. Yeah, there was some technical issue. Right. No. Uh, we, we would like to come to you with some questions, but uh, before that, I would... I, I, I would like to first hear what, what, what are the issues and concerns which have been raised by all the uh, members and participants who are there in the webinar. 
Absolutely. We okay. want you to settle down first. Uh, yes. And I'll reach with you with a few questions in some time. Okay. Now, uh, let me reach out to Mr. Raja Gopalan. Sir, you can hear me, Mr. Raja Gopalan? Yes, I'm able to hear you. Okay. Sir, uh, this is concerning to the PPE, like, you know, Mr. Udeshi ji has also mentioned, Sanjay ji has also mentioned, these days PPE products, including this mask, gloves, etc. are in high demand. And the availability of these products across the globe is pretty low. So what do you think? Can PPE manufacturing on a large scale prove to be, can prove to be an alternative for the apparel manufacturers, especially in the tough times like this? So I see the PPE as a new business not an alternate business for the existing business. Because we should not give up our core strength because this PPE is export driven and the pandemic has to reduce because there will be glut of manufacturers and you will not get the price that you are looking for because these are all low value, high volume items. So it will not contribute majorly to the existing garment industry, but at the same time, it can be seen as a new opportunity for the existing garment units. But garment units cannot give up totally to PPE. So these are all specialized products. So India is a consuming market. So we should not give up our core strength, what we are currently doing for the manufacturing sector. We should continue to do our existing business in a more organized way post pandemic because the demand cycle has to improve and it will improve because India is a consuming market. These are all specialized products. So it has to be left to the specialist who can do and fetch prices for that. It can't be for all the garment you need to go for PPE. Then you will not be able to get the value that you're looking for because your, your labor cost will go up. Your volume will also be a constraint. It will take some time, but it is not a full alternative for the existing business, but it's not a big, it's an opportunity which we can tag on, but it will not be alternative to the existing business or existing manufacturing facility, which are available across the country now. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Rajay Gopalan. Uh, uh, those were really useful insight and we also appreciate the fact that Trigger recently produced 1.2 million FDA compliant isolation gowns and coveralls. This was to help the society and the healthcare professionals from the front. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, uh, next I would like to move on to Mr. Sanjay. Uh, Mr. Jain, we have discussed about the global market, the polished and the China uh, scenario. What about the domestic market, sir? The domestic market is also a reduced demand for textiles and apparel sector because the consumer buying pattern as rightly said by you is going to be both low by sentiment and income so what are the steps that indian manufacturers need to take to overcome such situations in the future such scenarios uh the domestic market uh, definitely is going to recalibrate we are going to wean towards more value for money and it's and also PP products, uh, though typically people are feeling PP will be mainly in the medical fraternity, but I feel it's going to be consumed in a big way also by the normal consumer. Uh, so considering that we need to, as a manufacturer or a wholesaler or a retailer, we need to recalibrate and ensure we make products which we feel the consumer is going to be looking for. For example, now marriages, which is a very big thing in India, is going to be at a very low key for many months to come, maybe up to October, November, or maybe a bit more. So if anyone is into marriage, heavy garment, we need to recalibrate. Anyone doing fashion wear, party wear, you need to recalibrate. Because if you don't do it immediately, you already have some stockpile. That stockpile is also going to move very, very slowly because money is very limited in the hands. Uh, again, you need to see this market from two point of view. One is the urban or the satellite towns attached to urban areas, and then is the rural and semi-urban. Now, this is one uh, incident which is going to impact more the urban areas rather than the rural and semi-urban. Because even if we see the trends now, uh, we are seeing much more movement happening of goods, whatever we have in stock in those markets. People are buying, but urban movement is very, very low. Online is going to definitely pick up as people will be more and more wary to go out in the market. So if in your own uh, scheme of things, you have to ensure that you are also on the online platform if you're a brand or uh, you, if you're a wholesaler or retailer, you need to see how you can give better uh, without touch service to your consumers. In the sense, can you get WhatsApp orders, keep the goods packed. As soon as the retailer comes, you hand him over or you send it to his retail shop etc etc the touch points have to reduce no one wants to go out uh, you know we want to work 
but we only want to work as much as necessary we don't want to go out and work and do things which are not necessary i don't see traveling sales peer people traveling too much for selling is going to be all on the phone whatsapp digital medium so all this needs to be taken into consideration by the whole industry i don't uh, product, uh, consumption would fall 25 to 30% in domestic that's my uh, but uh, we have already taken a hit part of the hit has already gone and it's behind us so it's not that in the next 10 months we are going to see a 30% fall part of that fall has already happened so uh, we could see for one or two months there will be no fall from our last year's figures because we are catching up for the 40 or days of lockdown then we are going to see a, a dip and especially around the festive season marriage season there is going to be an issue however one good thing which has happened yesterday is the amount of liquidity which has been injected or promised to be injected by the government into the system into retailers wholesalers into the whole chain is going to be make a big difference because when you have money then you definitely go out and buy it uh, so money is always going to rotate and we all know 1 crore paid in the morning by evening today becomes 5 crore because of the speed of velocity of money because as soon as you see a uh, sms coming in your flash on your phone you are immediately making a payment to someone else and so on early in a high value check system it would take 5 days to make 1 crore to 5 crore into the system so digitalization whoever was not online has run helter skelter to get himself online so he can get payment and he can make payment there's going to be a huge the velocity of money is going to be huge and if we can inject liquidity at the right points as mr udeshi said the wheat crop has been good so farmers have got good money the monsoon uh, projections till now are they're going to be a normal monsoon for whatever i have read so we are going to see a lot of the normal money in the rural economy is not going to be very bad with all this uh, happening on the crop side when money be injected to support people during bad times by the government to manrega fooding etc etc and when the industry is going to be thirsty and looking forward to luring migrant workers back that's also going to put a lot of money back into the rural system and consumption and economy so i don't see a big problem into consumption apart from a few hiccups but we really need to align our product portfolio properly and make sure the right liquidity goes into the market at the right time which the government is working and i just like to add mr jigger for ginning and spinning uh, obviously unless we push exports that uh, we have that in the segment has already lost about 15% on its uh, stocks overnight all orders have been cancelled new orders are being given at low rates so the problem for them is the only way they can survive is exports i am hoping very soon maybe today or tomorrow again this is just a conjecture <laughs> well uh, with our honorable finance minister will be speaking again at 4 pm and we all know the china opportunity is a god sent opportunity coming from the wrong time a uh, wrong reasons but coming in as a big opportunity for the textile and apparel because we are one industry which is global and amount of exports we can do Webinar. we can really convert this industry into a runner rather than a, yeah. a startup So I hope we'll see some good export incentives coming in, which will make us start running and competing against China. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Jain. Okay, I would like to reach out to Mr. Kataria. Mr. Kataria. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hello, so, sir. I would. Hello. I would just like to take it up from where where Mr. Jain had left. Uh, that is again, uh, you know, talking about how India can gain benefit from the. Uh, you know china these days losing its share of business so the other the us china are locking horns these days and there is a sort of a trade war between us and china from last one year and now europe also increasingly you know becoming skeptical about china's role in the covid 19 pandemic can india benefit from this i would like to know from you uh hello hello Yes, Mr. Kadar. Go on. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, no. First, I would like to uh, start uh, from the last meeting. Actually, we uh, I had uh, about uh, three, four week, three weeks back with our industry associations, about fifteen, and the export promotion councils and all. 
those uh, no demands about the liquidity working capital epf and all these issues were raised in that uh, that meeting so that was the immediate concern of our industry like any other industry but uh, those issues in uh, uh, the announcement made by honorable uh, finance minister yesterday uh, uh, those li liquidity issues uh, uh, should get addressed uh, sub uh, no significantly because 80% of uh, about uh, industry is uh, msme and uh, there is uh, no those benefits i think are uh, as and fp uh, mr vk saying he can give more details but uh, whatever demands were being raised and we also took up with the uh, with the finance ministry and these issues have been addressed so the immediate issues uh, regarding liquidity i suppose get addressed substantially we have uh, the, uh, by the announcement of honorable finance minister and uh, we have also within our uh, uh, this uh, ministry we have also speeded up uh, the you no know, finalization of claims wherever claims are pending including tough we have introduced uh, this scheme uh, of bank guarantees and we are we are within next week, uh, one week's time we are going to achieve a lot of uh, you no know, progress under uh, by releasing you no know, whatever claims are there we have told them to uh, release immediately 80% without processing against bank guarantees so uh, this is about the immediate issue of the liquidity but the major issue is that uh, how do we recover how do we uh, what is our uh, no um, uh, plan for uh, medium and long term that was the issue in the last meeting also we had discussed uh, and uh, i find it that uh, as your uh, no topic for this uh, no uh discussion suggests survival of the fittest so uh, what what is important uh, in this is that we need to uh, make sure that one is that we are competitive because in survival there is a competition so we have to be competitive and we have to be very very innovative uh, like uh, in the pp uh, experiment you know last two months we are able to produce and which was mentioned by honorable uh, prime minister in his address also that in a very short time of two months we are able to uh, no produce large number uh, of uh, pps and masks and we are able to uh, no manufacture them in india now the thing is that how do we become globally competitive and how do we uh, how do we innovate this is done by the industry themselves you know with the we with the ministry's active uh, participation and support at different level we are able to uh, achieve that kind of uh, no uh, so something which which appeared uh, very very difficult in the beginning i remember initial one week or 10 days was very very difficult so but we could achieve this now the in the same manner what we need to do probably is that of course uh, we need to uh, keep uh, uh, we need to understand the demand pattern very closely what is the demand what is the demand global demand domestic demand and accordingly we produce we can't say that we are producing this thing and we will go on producing that we need to uh, what should i say reorient our manufacturing capacities and capabilities uh, uh, for, uh, according to the current demand and the forecasted demand patterns of the domestic and the global industry and accordingly produce so that uh, we uh, in the immediate uh, future we are able to survive we are able to generate uh, enough uh, no orders uh, to uh, survive so that is one major uh, and very important critical analysis each uh, industry has to do and then of course uh, this uh, uh, thing uh, about the self reliant what honorable prime minister i also mentioned we need to uh, no scale up our capacities when we scale up our capacity because at present we have serious structural issues with the uh, with the with our uh, no industry and the government already has taken several step in last uh, 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 few months to try to address those structural issues so once we address these structural issues 
uh, and try to scale up, try to uh, you know, open up uh, the other uh, sector uh, uh, like MMF and technical textile, we are going to achieve uh, significant growth. So that is an area we probably in immediate and long run, uh, we need to uh, you know, develop strategies uh, uh, you know, to, to invest in those areas, to uh, make the investment in those areas much more attractive than what we are today. And government also, I had uh, several rounds of discussions with the industry about uh, you know, creating a fund to support. Let us see what happens. You know? So uh, I, I think um, this is the approach we need to have. We need to cut down cost. We need to be competitive. We need to be innovative. And then we need to focus in uh, on the demands, which uh, whether there, there's a complete uh, reorientation of the manufacturing capacities and capabilities to uh, to uh, synergize with the demand patterns, and uh, of course uh, uh, structural issues. We uh, government is taking up uh, those structural issues, and we hope that these are addressed as early as possible. Thank you, sir. Thank so you. Are, uh, loud and clear from you is that we need to relook at our ecosystem if we really need to take yes. it. Yes. Okay. Uh, I would like to move on now to Mr. Dhruva. Mr. Dhruva, you can hear me, sir? Yeah. Okay. Now, Grado has come up with this Neotech technology, which produces fabric and which we discussed a bit in the first uh, question that we had asked you. Uh, the, I have two questions on this. Are these fabrics uh, resistant to COVID-19 virus? Number one. Number two. How do you expect to infuse fresh impetus in the Indian textile industry with this particular innovation that you had come up with? All right. So uh, first question uh, to answer. Uh, well, I wish uh, we would have uh, got this, uh, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 uh, kind of antivirus. But the reason why I'm not claiming as of today COVID-19, because the testing in India does not happen of COVID-19. And moreover, you, we all know the sensitivity of the virus, which is uh, so contagious and the world is on the knees. So this testing is done in the labs in US and some of the labs in the uh, Far East we have identified. So we have communicated to them, uh, we are going to send the fabrics for COVID-19 tests. It's an extremely expensive test. I'm sure it must be a very contained one. So once we get the test reports, we can claim it. But as of now, I must say that the testing what we have done on antivirus is the uh, MS2 bacteriophage, which is basically a non-enveloped virus. Now, this virus is more virtually more stronger in a way because uh, it's an RNA virus, which is more stronger. That is what is stated uh, biologically uh, than the envelope virus, which is uh, the COVID. So we hope that uh, we will have COVID-19 also coming out as the antivirus one. As of now, we are not claiming that. It is an antivirus fabric, which is definitely in the current times, uh, the ones which we will look at because as of now, the advices are that you buy or you wear a fabric or an apparel. Uh, you go into the market, you come back, you take it off, you have to put it in the washing machine and warm water and all those kind of advices. This for sure is going to help because the virus, what we have tested in the labs in India, the virus gets killed in two hours. 99.98% uh, of the virus, which is left, the MS2 bacterial page, gets killed in two hours. Now, that's a good sign. That's something is better than it didn't have that kind of a finish until now in the industry. So that is that is kind of answering you on the COVID-19 part. As of now, we are not claiming COVID-19, but definitely we are claiming antivirus fabric. So it has been tested. Once we get the test reports from the, uh, the global lab, then we are already in touch. Uh, once we have it tested, we will probably claim that as well. And for sure, it's going to be good. Uh, coming to the second part of infusion, uh, like I stated in my initial thing, initial uh, statement, industry needs positive impetus. And uh, Mr. Deshi and Mr. Radhgopalan, Mr. Jain, everybody has spoken on that. Today, anything new you do, you make yourself relevant in the market. That is very essential. So innovation helps you. Industry comes out with new products which are more relevant for the consumers to come and spend becomes essential. And that is how it is going to help the industry to come to terms, come to uh, the level where positivity will come in. 
The other thing, uh, touching upon what Mr. Dan said, uh, because people are going to be fearful of buying, the consumers are going to be home or they're not going to buy at the retail, uh, especially in the urban areas. I would say the new norm would be that the hygiene and sanitization in the stores to selling the fabrics like what we have innovated, the antivirus fabric, the new tech, is something which is going to help and infuse new uh, freshness to the industry. And uh, we hope for good things to happen. And with the kind of queries, even when people are locked down, my buyers are already inquiring about it. And they have a thumbs up on this. Right from my domestic market, which is the OTC over-the-counter market, where we sell to close to about 10,000 retailers and uh, close to about 500 dealers, wholesalers in one part of the company and the other companies as well of my, ours, OCM and uh, the Donia. So we have a lot of positivity coming around for this kind of a fabric. I'm sure we'll have good things happening. The brands are also very interested. In fact, global brands have started inquiring because uh, as soon as this uh, thing happened in January, when it started coming out, and all, uh, orders on hold. So a lot of inventory piled up. All these were uh, good. Uh, all these were supposed to be shipped to Vietnam, Bangladesh, where the factory shutdowns happened. And they have started inquiring that the fabrics which we had, I mean, they had held up, can we process this with this kind of a, you know, finish? And uh, that's something positive. That is what they are looking at. So once we, we've already started, once the factory start, we'll have these things happening uh, good. So that's that's the part of the positive infusion we feel will happen to the industry. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, uh, I would like to reach out to Mr. Singh now. Mr. VK Singh, uh, you need to unmute your audio, sir. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Singh, uh, the question for you is, the overall impact on the textile and apparel industry due to this pandemic is very huge, as we all know. So, are there any thoughts within the ministry and the trade association to come together and work cohesively so that the losses can be minimized? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because uh, it's a very peculiar situation where the uh, whole ecosystem, whole climate is changing very fast which will require very, very uh, quick policy response also and a response by the industry on innovation and cost cutting and uh, diversification, whatever is required, they also have to do it. And that time policy response is also required to be very, very quick. Even uh, some facilitation also is required. Like if you will see the whole, uh, this PPE thing has come out with just little facilitation, which was provided in the industry, which uh, was not making these products even not even the uh, fabric was available so easily. They have been able to do it. So that uh, the clothes association is a good thing. But one thing which I will like to say that next six months is going to be a tough time. And everybody will have to like government. Our government has some limitation. We, our currency is not a reserve, world reserve currency that you keep printing and nothing will happen. If we had this option, then we would have, government could have printed and put cash everywhere to everybody. But now, if something cash has to be done, it has to come from some taxation from the people only, because printing is not an option for our country. So then uh, uh, we all will have to realize that some sacrifice will have to be done by all sections to just carry through those tough phase. And then definitely, if we embrace innovation, cost cutting, and, and work with the mutual trust, because I, 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 there are certain things which we don't understand in the whole textile trade. So if uh, some uh, sort of clear understanding is there that why something is happening, so then some quick policy response will also be there. Ministry is working on so many projects, we, uh, schemes and ideas and all, but we cannot share them at this point of time. But definitely we are very alert and you will see a lot many activity and proactive approach uh, uh, from the ministry side in the times to come. I have some query with, uh, uh, from Mr. Chauhan regarding this uh, antiviral fabric. Uh, yes, what, what do you mean by antiviral? Yeah, because viral will not, virus will not penetrate. Have you got that virus penetration test done, number one? Or number two, or it just repels virus or kills virus? What is the clarity I am not able to understand? So, sir, the, the lab test, what we have conducted, with a very accredited NABL lab, accredited uh, lab, which has given us the report on our fabrics. So we had a treated and untreated uh, fabric of this antivirus uh, uh, yeah. you know, process we had done.
the antivirus when that fabric the treated fabric is put in a uh, you know the sample tube where the virus ms2 bacteriophage is put in which is the rna rna virus in 2 hours they have like close to they have the count of the virus like they put the 73000 you know the virus uh, uh, you know virus into that tube and in 2 hours when they took the testing they found that out of those 73000 virus they had close to about 99.9% of the virus getting killed whereas in the normal one of the same fabric when they had treated in the you know uh, in that tube is where only 4% of the virus got killed so the virus which comes on the fabric on the fabric surface okay. how soon because in general uh, you are aware uh, sir that on the various surfaces the virus remains alive so you say that on the on the on the iron or anything which is to the metal it is 72 hours on some surfaces it is about 2 hours or 5 hours so on fabric uh, currently it is what we have processed and tested is where we are getting a result of the virus that it is uh, getting killed 99.9% and in the normal one which is an untreated fabric it is only 4% which gets killed and even when it goes for 24 hours uh, you know the lab test uh, we have also kept for 24 hours in normal fabric 23% only gets killed whereas here already 2 hours is achieved 99.9 so that is what approximately your team is achieves in 24 hours IIT Delhi has also come with something like this uh, antimicrobial thing. So are you in touch with them, or you oversee an independent? Uh, innovation? Sir, we 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 have our own R and D center where obviously we buy a lot of chemicals from a lot of suppliers globally and in India. So this is something our own team, which had developed in January itself. Okay. But uh, as the opportunity time has come in to let the people know as to this is something what we produce is what we are offering to the uh, trade and the consumers and that is what we have now started uh, publicizing about it's a basically woven fa fa fabric with a coating antibacterial yes, so, so the kind of fabric what i am wearing this is the suit fabric the suits uh, suits and trousers uh, what you manufacture so formal wear we do a lot in our mill in uh, gbtl and also okay. our sister concerns which is uh, donier industries which does cotton uh, okay. and cotton and then our sister concern which is ocm in amritsar they do it on wool so we have diversified product range all three we have applied in all and uh, that is how we are coming to the point of stating to the people that the antivirus fabric is ready and the donny group of industries is going to come out yeah yeah man my that the way to go is very so i would like to interrupt on this because we would be running short of time with the webinar duration and audience is peeking in with lot of questions so would you mind with your permission i would like to take up a few audience questions now uh, which i'd like to put up to the panelists one by one uh, in fact there are so many questions that the audience have asked in fact they are still they are still pouring in a few common questions that i could see and i would like to put it to the panel one by one uh, one question is for mr udeshi mr udeshi you need to unmute your your audio yeah, yeah, yeah. tell me a question for you from the audience is with the ongoing crisis do you think the global man made fiber market will experience a disruptive innovation for 2021 uh, absolutely right i think uh, uh, i think some uh, my recommendation to the ministry of textile <clears throat> is to have some hand holding required by the industry uh we have seen i think there is a imbalance in china where upstream is being produced with the full capacity downstream is still struggling to operate so they have so much of surplus of upstream and the industry needs to survive for onslaught coming from the chinese uh, or the neighboring countries so this is one some kind of hand holding required from the government angle where there is going to be a demand contraction here in india and if you have more dumping taking place from the neighboring country it will be impossible for the domestic industry to start the production or survive i think that is going to be the one issue the second issue is yes innovation is going to be the new mantra for entire textile industry i think industry needs to think beyond 
what they are usually doing it to produce the typical commodity product. So people need to move out from the commodity product to the specialty product. In India today, the 90% of the production is coming out of for the apparel application or 87%. 13% is going for a technical textile. I, this ratio has to change and we have to look at 60% or 55 to 60% for apparel application and remaining for technical textile or a home textile. I think this innovation should take place and India will automatically grow in their uh, uh, vision and in their uh, approach to the global market. And I think reaching $33 billion to $100 billion of textile export is not an impossible task. I think people start thinking differently. I'm sure we'll be able to re uh, achieve that target. Thank you. Thank you, sir. One more common question that has come uh, from the audience, and I would like to address it to Mr. Rajagopalan. Mr. Rajagopalan, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I'm able to hear you. Okay. Sir, with this rapid changing sourcing dynamic, uh, do you think the pandemic can act as a blessing in disguise for the Indian apparel exporters? As a lot of the panelists have said, that this is an opportunity for a lot of new innovation things. Only thing, we have to remove the fear from the consumer mind. Once we say too technical about the products and other things, the consumption level of products will come down because Indian season and Indian conditions are different. The product should be relevant to the market and the new opportunity for all of us to upgrade. One is the work environment will change. The workers will be in a better place to work. The productivity level of the workers will go up because all the factories will go for upgradation in terms of hygiene and the housekeeping part which will lead to more productivity from the workers' point of view. So the productive level of the workers will come down. To some extent, cost will also be uh, rationalized because once the workers are in a good atmosphere, the level of productivity also goes up. The second important thing is uh, that the workforce will be now locally available because the migration part will take some more time to settle down. So most of the manufacturer will look for a local source of laborers which will also be an opportunity for the companies to upgrade and also bring down the cost of the labor. The third important thing is the products which are already there in the pipeline. This will go into the market for some time. That will take some time and there are a lot of production availability to us. That means the countries which are closing down will come to India. So it's a big opportunity for manufacturers who want to put up a big capacity in the days to come. So it is a win-win for all of us and it's an opportunity but at the same time, there should be a value integration. That means we should not do too many need to products. Then we'll not be able to pledge the price because ultimately it has to be a bottom centric kind of a profit orientation should be there in all businesses. So we have to see what best we can do in terms of products and other things which are relevant to the marketplace. Right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. One more common question and this will be the last question from the audience. And I would like to address it to Mr. Sanjay Jain. Mr. Jain, the question is that the Indian textile industry is open Bad to the advantage of the current anti-China sentiment and all of us have discussed about this. But is India prepared with the ecosystem in place, be it in the form of infrastructure, logistic, cost competency versus China? Uh, honestly, we are not, especially in the man-made fiber segment and also in terms of efficiencies. Uh, that's why we, in every webinar, have been saying that we need to start uh, getting onto the pen and paper at least and start planning. But it's important people are not still convinced that this opportunity is going to come their way. And as you see, Indians are not, we don't plan so much in advance that once we get onto it, like we did in PP, then we can really create wonders. So uh, we are all looking for what sort of direction the government gives uh, in this series of uh, announcements by our Honorable Finance Minister. And whether it's me as an individual or me as an association representative, based on that, we will have to assess uh, how much uh, we can go forward. How, of course, minor changes, internal changes we have to make nevertheless, whether uh, the opportunity is big or small, because unless we get efficient and productive, we are anyway not going to survive in this new world. Forget uh, whether you get, can grab the China opportunity. And also we need to remember uh, liquidity for new investment is going to be very, very limited and limited to very, very few people. So how much investment will be possible, how 
banks are going to provide that liquidity for working capital is another issue and to provide it for new business is another issue excepting some of the very strong players of balance sheet bandwidth to expand so that's going to be a constraint we may have to look for a lot of joint ventures uh, already indian government is working for fdi i know the textile ministry will also be specifically working on getting fdi for the segment so we need to do more of jvs so that capital can come not in the form of debt but in the form of equity so that the burden is not there it doesn't sink you in the developmental stage so i think so and we should not only look at large companies doing it uh, as indicated yesterday by our honorable finance minister uh, what we now call msme is not those small tiny tiny companies who just come so it's a changed world we need to work in a changed fashion and i'm sure some opportunities will definitely come which we will take but whether we can take the uh, long leap forward the giant step will all depend on how the policies pan out how the banks support us and whether uh, we can create a responsive environment infrastructure and policy which is consistent so that people trust and are ready to come to the country on a long term basis thank you thank you mr jain okay i will still like to take a well very last question and address it to mr dhruva uh, again coming from the audience is it right time for companies to invest in automation and digitization this is particularly to reduce the dependency on the labor uh, so that you know in future we can uh, run with such adverse scenarios also so what do you think mr dhruva technology per se in textiles has always been dynamic and it's always been changing i mean what we have been one of those oldest uh, you know uh, countries manufacturing textiles and we've had so much of manchesters here made up in this country and over the period of time uh, the way technology has come up it's changed so automation is a constant uh, you know uh, i would say it, it's always going to be constant and it has to keep changing because when you're doing that you're not just looking at your uh, the indian diaspora or just the indian consumers in the market you're looking at the global part of it and moreover as a country where uh, the global uh, you know the manufacturers or the business people are looking at this country to be invested in you have to be technologically upgraded so aut automation is for sure a constant change it will keep happening and it is a must it should not stop and it cannot stop either right um, coming to uh, the second point uh, what was the second point uh, jigar uh, can you just come digitization on? yeah so the digitization part of it again we are talking about technology again uh, so in the current times uh, like everybody suggested and uh, uh, the panelists also here suggested it's all a time when the travels will not happen uh, travels will be very restricted travels will be happening with a lot of uh, you know hurdles everything how do you reach out to your customers consumers and your market people so digitization for sure becomes again an important area where uh, it will be a must those who hop on to this wagon and understand will be the ones who will be uh, successful so they'll be more relevant uh, with the times and it's a must just just adding one more point because there was a lot of discussion on this china opportunity and thing coming in uh the news is that uh our respected prime minister has already identified 10 industries hand picked them and textile is one of them those 10 and out of those 10 one is textiles and there's a uh, land which mr maybe mr vijay singh would uh, probably can confirm that there is about 461 to 461000 hectare of land pool which has been decided uh Uh, or is being planned and the countries like china us south korea and japan have already shown interest so i really don't know how much of validity is there but it's a morale boosting one i just thought if this is also a platform to share that because the industry talwats are here that that's already underway and uh, i just got to know yesterday that that's happening so that's a very positive sign so i really don't know if something can really be you know backed up on this uh, by mr singh or anybody who's heard about it in fact uh, I, uh, we have been working all through the, this lockdown our office was not closed even for a day all six days even saturday have been working so we are working on many, several fronts but which, which are the project which will ultimately go it depends you all know that there are we are all everybody has to work in a constrained environment so industry has a major responsibility to somehow participate chip in and show the enthusiasm 
and things you will not find the ministry wanting. That is the only thing which I will like to tell at this point of time. But de definitely, uh, but I, I, what I, I get confused at times that what, what is the right way. So we will, when we talk one-to-one -one or face-to-face, -face, we will have many more difficult questions. <laughs> but, but definitely we are working on so many other uh, ideas. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. Okay, uh, so we are now almost we are running short of time. So we are heading towards the concluding of this session. So we'll not take more questions from here. And I would just like to conclude the session from here and would like to extend my heartiest uh, thanks to all the panelists and our guests from the ministry for sharing their perspective on this subject. And a very special thanks to all the audience who are coming live in huge number. Uh, for the benefit of all, the session has been recorded and the recording will be sent to the customers who has registered but unfortunately has been, not been able to make for the event. And you can also get the recording of this webinar by making a request on our website. Uh, we'll keep bringing you thoughts and perspective from some of the best leaders of the industry like we did today uh, with such series of webinars. Once again, thank you so much from our side. It's a good day. Stay safe and healthy. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. It has been very enlightening for me also. Personally, I'm very happy to participate. Thank you for being a part, Mr. Singh. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.